and welcome to Poznan in Poland for the first round of the ICF Sprint Canoe World Cup for 2012. 65 nations, over 400 athletes competing in canoeing and kayaking. World famous Malta Regatta course, 2,200 meters long, nine lanes and loads of action as the athletes get themselves ready for the Olympic Games in London in 67 days time. The festivities starting with great tenseness all round as this was the last chance for many of the athletes from the European nations to qualify their countries for a place at the 2012 London Summer Olympic Games. Conditions perhaps not top but they were fair, they were the same for everyone. Most of the countries qualified themselves at the World Championships last year in Seged in Hungary. However, there were still some places up for grabs and these have been distributed in the last month or so in the various intercontinental regattas. This is the last chance. It's not guaranteed for the athletes but it is guaranteed for the countries and it does put them in a good position. And now a change of scene. Beautiful weather welcomes the World Cup. K1, 1,000 men to start us, and what a what a course here. We've got Van and Paulson, Hoff, Carey, Witchley, all the stars in your picture. Adam Van Coverden, the world champion. And they're off. Very, very even start. We'd expect Adam Van Coverden, the Canadian, always has a fast start. Adam looks like he's not trying, but he has got the fastest time over 500 meters in this course. One third of the way, and he's still got half a boat length ahead of Rennie Paulson in the yellow tip boat. Third is Max Hoff from Germany, multiple world champion. Adam concentrating, 1,000 meters here. It is one of his specialities. Rennie Paulson had some excellent results last year in the World Cup. He actually won two of the regattas. 250 meters to go, and it's going to be a close one. Adam Valkoulsen from Canada, Rennie Paulsen from Denmark. And coming at the bottom is Olympic former champion, Eric Burst Larsen. It's going to be a close one. And as they come up to the line, Burst across the line, Rennie Holton Paulsen, too close to call for second. Is it Adam Van Coveden or the Olympic former champion, Eric Burst Larsen? But there's certainly the winner from Denmark, Rennie Halton Poulsen. And as we see in the replay, a very clean start at the top of the picture, lane number two, Adam Van Coverden takes the early lead, holds on for most of the race, but just gets tipped in the last couple of meters. Did he do enough to hold on to his second place? And there's the man of the moment from Denmark, as you see. He gets first. Who's going to get the second place? It's going to be very, very close. It looks from this picture like Eric Beres Larsen takes it. And there's the confirmation. First result, Rennie Paulsen. Second, Eric Larsen. Third, the Canadian, Adam Van Coverden. <laughs> And now to the second race of the day, switching to the Canadians, the canoe, the C1, 1,000 meters. Favorites again, lanes four, five, and six, Menkoff, Aldershaw, and Brendel. Menkoff won the World Championships 2009, 2010. In your picture here, here's Mark Aldershaw. He's fairly unique. His grandfather competed at the London Olympics. And here's a chap who was unlucky last year, Sebastian Brendel from Germany. His paddle actually rose. Off they go. 1,000 meters, as you can see in the canoe, only one paddle. Conditions a lot better than the last couple of days. A slight headwind in the picture. Mark Aldershaw from Canada. But as we pass the 500 mark, 500 meters to go, it's Matthew Goubel from France. Still four in it with 250 meters to go. Mark Aldershaw, Sebastian Brendel, and with 100 meters to go, it's a two-horse race. 
Coming into the line, Mark Oldershaw pushes the bar across the line. Second, Germany, Sebastian Brendel. And third, an excellent result for Canada, that's Benjamin Russell. Here's the winner, Mark Oldershaw, guarantees his Olympic place with this. He must be delighted. A very, very strong start from Oldershaw. And he keeps it going right in the end, takes a fairly easy victory from Sebastian Brendel. Third Canada, fourth France. The results, Mark Oldershaw from Canada first, Sebastian Brendel from Germany second, and Russell from Canada in third place, just edging out Matthew Google from France. And now on to the kayaks again, the K2, 1,000 meters, and what a cracking lineup we have here. We have the bronze, silver, and gold medalists from last year's World Championships, as well, of course, the Germans, Martin Holstein, Andreas Iller, who are the Olympic champions. And they're off. Very clean start from all the paddlers. This is again 1,000 meters. as they head up the course. Lane number six, the Russian duo, Vitaly Yuchenko, Vasily Progova, putting in good progress. But as we cross the halfway line, 500 meters to go, it's the Portuguese duo of Pimenta and Silva who are really taking on the pace. As we come to the business end of the course, it's the Germans, Martin Holstein, Andreas Iller, the current Olympic champions that are getting ahead from the rest. As we approach the last, few meters of the course it's going to be Holstein and Iller from Germany crosses the line in first second the Spanish third Portugal good early form two months before the Olympic Games from the Olympic champions they weren't in front at the beginning but they came through very powerfully as often the case pushed very, very hard by the Spanish and of course the Portuguese who are leading in the first section of the course. Leaning backwards, put the bow over the line and a hands up in the air. That's my race. Confirmation of the results. First place Germany, second place Spain, third place Portugal, and the world champion Slovakia, not even in the medals. On to the next race of the day, the C2, 1,000 meters for men. Canada, Belarus, Germany, Cuba, Azerbaijan, China, and Ukraine. The Olympic gold medalist, the Bird Notch brothers in lane number two. And in lane number four, the current world champions from Germany. As they get off to a clean start, 1,000 meters in this Canadian discipline. Making good pace, but it's still very even in the early stages of this race. The Cuban pair, Cuba, a really good, strong tradition in this sport. And as we cross the halfway mark, 500 meters to go, it's Germany ahead of Germany. Germans clearly a great tradition. They are the current world champions. That's one second halts. Currently making it look almost easy as they come down to the business end of the course. Two lengths ahead. Who's going to get it? It's certainly going to be a German. And as they approach the line, it's so close. Looks like. Kretschmer and Kuschler may just have got it. We'll have to wait for the photo. The German team's definitely looking good with 67 days to go for the Olympic Games. Way ahead of the field. In third place was Azerbaijan. No doubt though that Germany is the dominant team in this sport at the moment. And even once they cross the line, the German pairs have no idea who's won. Do you know that Germany first, Germany second, Azerbaijan in third position, just edging out the Badanov twins, Andre and Alexandre. 
Extremely close between the two German pairs. One, two, Azerbaijan third, Belarus fourth. Paddles are made of high technology stuff now. Let's have a look exactly what they're made of. I'm Andras Trebic. Uh, I am the commercial director of, of Bracho Sport Company. Since 20 years professional, kayak and canoe paddles. The main difference between kayak and canoe, you have two blades in the kayak paddles, the athletes sit in the boat, and the canoe paddle has only one blade and they have a T-handle. So the main difference, you are paddling only on one side and you have to steer with this paddle the boat. You don't have any other steer. So during the stroke, you have to steer the boat at the end of the stroke with the, with the paddle. The athletes have to choose always by his techniques, by his weight and by his uh, knowledge of the sport, the right paddle. Well, that's it for the 1,000 meters. We're down to the shorter sprints, the K1, 500 meters, and it's the women event first, packed with stars and future stars. Rachel Cawthor from Great Britain, Paldanius, Reinhardt, Ozzy Penko. Here's Sophie Paldanius. Good record in the last couple of years. And they're ready. They're off. Also, Nicole Reinhardt. She's won the gold medal in the K4s from Germany. About the surprise here, 30 year old from Denmark, Henriette Engel Hansen's taken it ahead with 250 meters to go. Putting it all into this race, this would be a shock. She's always there, thereabouts, but hasn't won a major honor before. And if we come down to the line, it's gonna be very close, but it looks like, yes, it looks like Henriette Engel Hansen from Denmark holds on for the lead. She's going to be delighted here. Very, very close for second and third, even fourth positions. All off to a clean start. This is an Olympic event, by the way, so they're keen to do as well as they can in preparation. The unconfirmed results, Denmark first, Slovenia second, and Nicole Reinhardt for Germany takes third spot. Rachel Cawthorn for the Great Britain didn't have a great race. She comes in ninth position. Thank you. And now, staying in the 500 meters is the K4 Flying Fours and the women's final. It's going to be difficult to look past lane number five and the Germans, Leinhardt, Weber, Wager, Augustine, and Dietza. This is mainly the people who took part in the Olympics, won the gold medal. And as we pass the 200 meters to go, it is the Germans with almost a boat length clear. The race is very much now for second position. Portugal coming strongly. It's going to be difficult to see who gets second. Russia takes a second, followed by Portugal. But a very dominant display from Leonhard Weber, Vaga Augustin and Dietza. Looking good for the Olympics. All of them got a very good start but the Germans completely dominated this race. More than a one boat length ahead as they cross the finishing line. In the K4, Flying Fours, 500 meter race. The winners, Germany, three seconds ahead of Russia who takes silver, Portugal with the bronze, just edging out Belarus. China, France, Russia and Poland making up the rest of the competitors. We're in Poznan for the first World Cup regatta of 2012. Staying with 500 meters is the K1 men's final. And we need to focus on lane number five. Anders Gustafsson from Sweden. Won the World Championships in 2010. Has been looking very, very strong in the heats. Here in the picture, Anders, training partner of Adam Van Koveden of Canada. Off they go. The bottom of your picture from Tunisia, Muhammad Ali Mervet. Let's see what we can do. Flying, absolutely flying from Canada. Brady Reardon. 
Last few meters to go. Who can hold on? Sweden, Canada in the picture. It's going to be close. Anders Gustafsson takes it from Canada. And third place, Tunisia. That's their first medal in the World Cup. Mohamed Ali, Merbid, lane number nine, a late spurt from him, making the whole nation proud. But first place, the 2010 world champion, Anders Gustafsson, takes the race. Brady Reardon, the race of his life from Canada, couldn't quite hold on over the last 50 meters. And taking the bronze, Mohamed Ali, Merbid from Tunisia. Lane three. Winner, Gustafsson from Sweden. Second, Rienen from Canada. And third, Merbet from Tunisia. That's their first World Cup gold. Staying with 500 meters, it's the K2 women. It's going to be difficult to look past lanes four and six, where we have the two German pairs that made up the fours that we've just seen a few minutes ago that won the gold. Dietzer Weber against Leardhardt and Wagner Augustin. On the line, ready to start. And they're off. 500 meters, full speed straight away. I say we need to expect the Germans. And that is a huge lead straight off by Weber and Dietzer. A boat length, and they're only halfway. Caroline Leonhard, Katrin Wagner, Augustine in the second boat, trying to hang on. As we come over the line, very, very straightforward victory for lane number six, followed by lane number four. That's Weber and Dietzer take it from Leonhard and Wagner Augustine. With the Spanish pair coming up closely behind. This is going to be frightening for the other teams watching this, the preparation for the Olympics. But do remember, the Hungarians, traditionally very strong in this sport, are not at this meeting this weekend. They're actually holding their home trials. It'll be interesting to see what happens in the next couple of months. The official results confirm it's Germany ahead of Germany. Francesca Weber, Tina Dietz take the advantage today over Karnia Linhard and Katrin Vaga Augustine. Spain take the bronze medal. Now let's have a look with an insight into what actually can be seen from the boats as they're competing. After the 500 meters, it's the fast and furious 200 meters, the K1 men's final, Makiva, Rao, Pravioto, Beaumont. These are really the guys who are going to set the action alight today. 35 seconds of sheer torture, no tactics, it's head down and paddle. Early in the race, Sal Carriotto taking the dominant position. Ed McKeever lane two. In fact, they're all in a line. It's going to really go down to the last few meters. Who wants it the most? And they come up to the line. It's lane number two, lane number six. Very difficult there. Either Ed McKeever or Sal Carriotto. Great Britain against Spain. Ed McKeever, the 2010 world champion. These are the real power men, the real sprinters. As we see them in action there, lane number three, Ronnie Rao, has been the dominant force for the last five or six years in this sport. But as they come over the line, first and second fairly clear, but the next six, it's anyone's call. 
This is what it's all about. First time in the Olympics for the C2s and K2s. Great and Great Britain, second place, Saul Craviotto. And the official Spain. result, Ed McKeever takes gold, Saul Craviotto, silver, and, and for Russia, Russia, it's Molchikov. With Ronnie Rao taking the fourth position. And here is the starting list for race number 157. C1, 200 meter. Next race on the course, it's the Canadians, the C1, 200 meters, men's final. Paddlers to look out for here, Yuri Shaban, Olympic medalist, world champion, former world champion, Ivan Steele, he's been second in the world championships last year. Azerbaijan, a bit of a mystery here. Demyanenko from Azerbaijan was the world champion, but he's actually been displaced by Andrew Kreta, an unknown force. And of course, they're off. 200 meters, furiously paddling down the line. In picture, this is a real surprise. Andre Kreto from Azerbaijan. And as they come to the business end of the course, it's going to be close, but Kreta's going to take it for Azerbaijan. Too close to call for second and third. Ivan Steele from Yuri Cheban. Just shows the depth of field from Azerbaijan. All get off to a very solid start. But already moving ahead of the others in lane number four is Andre Kreto. see the balance and power of these athletes incredibly impressive leans back shoots the bow across the line and takes a very very well deserved gold medal real quality in this race dominated by the Eastern Europeans official results Azerbaijan first Russia second Ukraine take the bronze We'd like to welcome uh, Mr. Rafał Bruski, Mayor of City of Bydgoszcz. Possibly the most exciting race in the whole competition, the K2 200 men's final. And we've got some real quality here. The French world champions, Liam Heath and Jonathan Schofield from Great Britain, second in the Europeans. And a lot of quality right throughout the field. And they're off. It's all about the start. Who can get away? Paddle like fury. Oh, there's a bit of a problem. The Russians, really good start, but if you break your paddle, there's not much you can do. Moving into the last few meters. And it's going to be desperately close, but just ahead of the others, it's France that takes it. That's Arno Uwa, Sebastian Jouve. Great Britain in second, Leon Heath, Jonathan Schofield, and it looks like the Canadians. Yes, Ryan Cochrane, Hugues Funel could have taken the third place. Incredibly close at the end. But dramatic there because the Russians very, very strong in qualifying. Not much you can do, unfortunately. Powering home the French duo. Double world champions look set to be favourite for the Olympic Games. And the official results France gold, Great Britain silver, Canada take the bronze position. The last race of the day, the C2 200 meters men's final. Look out for the Azerbaijanis, Belarus and Uzbekistan. They have the best three lanes, the fastest in qualifications. And the Brazilians present. Good to see the Brazilians present because obviously they have the Olympic Games to organize in four years' time. It's going to be interesting to see how their program is developing. And they're off. Quickest delay in lane number five Dmitry Bachenko, Alexander Vocheski. Coming up to 100 meters to go, and it's going to be very, very close. Belarus have the lead at the moment. But the Brazilians are coming back. Is it going to be Brazil or Azerbaijan? Very, very close finish there. Belarus gets it. They've always been a strength in this event. Looks like Brazil, though, coming home in second. That's Erland Souza and Ronison Oliveira. Azerbaijan, 
coming in third position. Pure power in this event, only 200 meters. Make a mistake, you're not gonna win it. Belarus pushes the bow over the line to take first place and the gold medal. You've been watching the Poznan Poland leg of the World Cup put on by the ICF. And the official results, Belarus first, Brazil second, Azerbaijan take the third place. That's it for today. Thanks for tuning in. Next week, Duisburg is the second stage in Germany of the ICF World Cup. I'm Matthew Layton. Look forward to speaking to you next week. <laughs>